Hey guys, how y'all doing? This is uh, my March um, video blog or vlog update. And uh, yeah, the last one was like 15 minutes, so I'm gonna do my best and keep this around five or six. I'm gonna put a little video at the end of it as well to kind of give you a, a glimpse of what baptism was like this month in Andremba. Um, but there's a lot to update you guys on. This month has been packed full. Um, it's been a great month. It's been a fulfilling month. But it has been a crazy month, to say the least. I know I left you guys last time. We were uh, kind of coming up with our strategy and with our plan um, to uh, to bring relief to the people here in Tuliar. And so I talked about the buckets. Well, we have finished the buckets. Um, we finished probably about three weeks ago of putting all the buckets together. Steve and I went around town, spent about a week getting all that together. And then we filled the buckets up as a team, and then people on our team went out and distributed um, with each church. I know Nathan did a, a great job going out with our church and distributing around um, the area where our church, uh, where our church is located, um, helping some of those families. I want to say that through the 300 buckets, I, I really want to say, um, I, I would say at least a thousand, maybe two thousand people were reached, um, and so that is really cool. Yeah, we're meeting a physical need. But more than that, we're meeting the spiritual need as well and getting to share the gospel with these people who, some who may have never heard. Um, so that was really cool. And now, um, when it, I guess for the relief stuff, um, right now where we are is we're done in Tuliar with all that we can do here. Uh, but we're looking for ways to bring relief to our friends on Besatra and then on Dremba and in Tanansu and some of the places that were really hit hard. Um, which is kind of tricky because we can't just hand out things. Um, and we're not a government organization where we can just, you know, buy tons and tons of rice or beans and just go hand it out. And so we're trying to figure out just the most wise way um, to, to help them and to, you know, to meet that need, to meet that physical need. Um, so that's one thing I will ask you guys to pray for is just discernment and wisdom on our part. Last week we actually asked people in Andremba and in Besatra uh, maybe just for their ideas and uh, to make us a list of people who are in need who need rice and um, you know all the way we want to we want to meet the need we don't want to just meet the need for a day or two we want to do our best to supply some food that they're gonna have um, for a little longer down the road um, because you know in, a, in three or four months ago three or four months from now is when they're really gonna begin to suffer um, because so many of their crops have been washed away through the cyclone so that's kind of where we stand with the relief here in um, in Southwest Madagascar. Um, some other things up that you own. Uh, we did the baptism in Andremba, but before I get to that, um, we had an unexpected baptism in Besatra. And uh, I know I put a blog about that, so you've seen the video hopefully, and you've kind of read the story about what happened there. So that was really unexpected, but that was an awesome way that, that God was really just being faithful and really working even in the midst of, of a literal storm. Um, I mean, just two or three weeks after the storm hit, and, and after we kind of assess the damage, you know, here we are walking out to this, this watering hole and doing baptism. So I really do believe that that is going to be a landmark, kind of a memorial, so to speak, um, for the people of Besatra to always look back and remember that God is faithful and that God is still working even in the, uh, the midst of their suffering, in the midst of chaos. I'm sorry this ain't shaking so much. My arms are getting tired. But, um, another, but uh, to update you guys on Andre Bantanansua, the teaching out in Andremba went great, and um, actually our last bush trip out, we did the baptism in Andremba. And um, we thought that there were going to be about six people get baptized, but uh, so often, as, as things always happen, is that the plans changed, and it ended up being two, um, because the other four weren't in weren't at the village in the, at that time. And so, um, so we baptized two. Uh, thankfully, one of the two we baptized was the guy who we consider the leader of the church. Um, they call him the president of the church, which basically kind of is, is kind of like that pastor role. And so we empowered him and we told him that, hey man, you have the authority now to baptize those who come in after. And so we, we told him for um, guys like Itsima and also the president of the, uh, the village itself, um, we, we told him that when they get back, when they come into town, when they come into the village, just to go ahead and baptize them and have people there to witness um, and, and to see the, the testimony of, of this picture of the new life. And so we just praise God um, for how things went in Andremba. It was really cool to be a part of. Um, it was just a crazy scene. There was kids playing out in the water. Um, there were cows walking in and out of the water that we were baptizing people in. So you just get a picture there of uh, what kind of water we're baptizing people in. It's, it's not clean. It's not like the stuff that we have in our churches in the States. I mean, it's the cow. It's the watery. It's, you know, it's the watering hole. It's the place where people pee. 
poop probably. Um, so yeah, not very, not very clean, not very sanitary, but hey, we're dunking them for Jesus and that's really awesome. So we're really, really excited about that. And um, so yeah, and uh, another cool story that happened last month as well, this actually just happened last week. So it's really just kind of uh, in my mind, probably will always be in my mind because I'll probably never experience anything like it before uh, again in my life. And so we left for baptism in Andramba, and the guy, the pastor guy, the president of the church, as they call him, comes up to us and says, Hey, my, my daughter, is in, she's been in labor for a day and a half now. He's like, can you guys take her to the hospital? And so we load up in the, we're like, sure, we'll, we load up in the car with him, um, three other women, and his daughter, who's been in labor since the night before. And um, so we're thinking, we're going to have this baby in the car. I mean, this baby is going to be birthed in one of our cars. We had two cars with us. So we start going down the road, and uh, Drew Smith, who's one of the journey guys here, he's, he's driving. Um, and we are behind, we're in the car behind him, and um, we're about 20 kilometers, maybe 15 kilometers away from Betuki, from the hospital, and the car stops. And the lady walks out, she goes over to the side of the road, she throws up a couple times. The next thing we know is she sits down. Okay, now I'm gonna be graphic here, I'm just gonna completely be honest with you. We all get out of the car and we're just kinda watching, okay, we're thinking, she's about to have this baby here on the side of the road in the middle of the bush. This is just surreal. And uh, <laughs> the next thing I hear is uh, the water breaking, and then I don't hear another sound from her at all. No peep out of her. The next, the next sound I hear after that is um, the baby. And so this lady was has a baby on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the bush. And um, so, one, that's just surreal. But the thing that I have to brag about, about her and just about these women here in general is that they are just tough as nails. This lady gets out of the car, throws up, sits on the ground. The other ladies come to her to help her out. She has the baby on the side of the road in a field. Ten minutes later, stands back up on her feet, has blood going down her legs. Like I said, I'm going to be graphic here. Has blood going down her legs. She cleans the blood off. She gets her baby, and she sits back down on the car. Crazy. Okay? I mean, lady is tough as nails. So that was just a surreal experience. That was the first time I've actually been in the presence of a baby being born. Um, and it had to happen in the bush of all places, so I don't think, well, until my future wife has our first child, um, anything is going to top that. So, uh, so yeah, that was just surreal, but it was cool because on the day, I'm going to be spiritual here now, on the day that, um, you know, we did something that is a picture of new life and of, of new birth in the Christian life in baptism, um, there was literally a, a new birth in the bush that day. And uh, it was a little girl, and as far as we know, she's she's healthy right now. And they actually named her um, Batista, which uh, which means you know to to baptize um, in this language. So that was that was very cool. It was just another way that God just kind of just just to work, you know, just to know that He is the life giver, um, and that is a really cool thing. Uh, I guess the last thing to update you guys on is um, this month. I guess uh, the way you can pray for Nathan and I, the way you can. Um, just kind of lift us up and remember, remember us is we're taking a whole month and we're doing vacation. Um, we've been kind of holding out on our vacation days, waiting to get to a certain time, um, and then something happened with that, so our plans were kind of shifted, but we're still going to go anyways, and we're going to take a whole month off from here in Tuliar. First, we're going to go up to our meeting um, that's in, in the capital city here in Madagascar, and then from there, um, we're heading to South Africa. South Africa to Istanbul, where we're going to go visit some friends who we were in training with. Um, almost two years ago, which is crazy. So we're going to hang out with them for about 11, 12 days. Then we're going to fly back down, and then I, I'm going to go um, to Cape Town for a few days, and Nathan's going to head back to Tuliar at the end of April, and then I'll be back at the very beginning of May. Um, and so I guess the way you can just be praying for us this next month and praying for me um, is just for spiritual rest, for emotional rest, and just for physical rest. I mean, it's really good just to kind of get a time to just check out of some things here because um, this will be the first time in a year that we've really kind of been away from Tuliar. And so it's much needed for all of us. Um, and I think for, for Nathan and I, it's just going to also give us a chance to kind of um, recast vision and to get prepared for the next three months when we get back. Because when I get back, I have May, June, and July. And then I'll be seeing your faces pretty soon after that. And so I'm just asking you um, to be lifting up and praying and also just continue to pray here for the Southwest team. Um, and I guess really this update, praise God for all that he did. Um, 
Andremba baptism. Besides your baptism, new birth from a lady in Andremba, I guess one thing you can really be lifting up and praying for is Tanansua. Um, they weren't able to meet the last trip out. They weren't able to meet the trip before that. And so pray that whatever is going on, whether it be some spiritual warfare um, or whatever, that, uh, that, that, would just, that, that the Spirit would just break through that, would open up their hearts and minds, and would just show them the importance of following the Lord in baptism, um, but also just following the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis. So just continue to be with them, continue to pray um, for them as your brothers and sisters in Christ, although they are you know, halfway across the world. They're still um, in the same family of us that we all are. Okay, it sounds really stupid, but we're all in a church family. We're all the body of Christ, and so just continue to lift that up. And I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to my uh, my Braves. Opening day is on Monday. I'm um, pretty excited about this season. I'm actually going to get to see some games when I get home, and uh, I'm thinking that they can win it all this year, World Series. So I'm looking forward to it. So that's just a quick shout out. And um, again. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for the ways you support me and the ways that you stand by me. Even though you're not physically here, you're spiritually present through your prayers. And I just thank you so much for that. I covet them all the time. And again, I'll be seeing you guys in just four months' time from now. That is crazy. Um, so yeah, this is Doug signing off here um, from my unusually colored and um, special house. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Come down to the river Come and let yourself in Make good on a promise Never heard again If you lost stand loaded You're broken down all of your trouble Come down, down To all you sinners And the weak at heart To all you helpless On the boulevard Wherever you are now Whatever evil you found Bring all of your trouble Yeah.